Excellent. Um, Torin, my first question to you, I like to start off my interviews with a, with a softball here. What was your first job in the movie and TV industry? My first job, um, I was an intern at a, uh, at a uh, film composer studio. Uh, his name is Christopher Leonard. He does a lot of television and movies. And um, uh, a summer after college, that's where I worked for free and uh, learned a lot about how a film composer studio works. Um, good times, good times. <laughs> <laughs> Who were some of those early influencers for you in the world of, of composing? Um, Probably the biggest influence I had was um, uh, James Newton Howard. Um, his score for King Kong uh, just blew me away when I saw it as a kid. And that was a score that made me want to be a film composer. And so um, when I was deciding where to go for school, I saw that he went to USC. And so I was like, that's the place I want to go. And then, um, you know, they actually have a mentorship program at USC and he's on the board for it. So luckily I was able to meet him through the process and go to his studio and, and you know, see how he does things. So um, that, was, that was quite a cool experience. We're here to talk about your work on Five Days in Memorial, which um, I'll be honest and blunt, it was incredible. Like your work on uh, this series was, uh, I mean, you have, I, I stress the importance when talking to somebody and sometimes they think I'm crazy. I just, a score elevates things in so many different ways. And, and somebody that, you know, you appreciate film, you understand that. And this series, as emotional and as raw as it is, that's my first question. Before we kind of dive in how you got the job, how do you approach something maybe with a real story versus maybe just a, a fictional one? Is there a different approach for you there? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, well, and thanks for the compliments. That's very, that's very kind of you. Um, I mean, I guess this is the first true story that I've worked on. And yeah, I think what makes it different is that, um, I mean, if this was a, if this was a fiction, it, it would be so overdramatic and unrealistic that, you know, it would be kind of too much. But the fact that it was real, I mean, it, it actually helps. It, it helps me not have to do as much with the music. It didn't need to push the drama forward because in the back of everyone's mind is the, the very sobering fact that this did happen. And so um, it, it's, it's still a delicate balance, but in a lot of ways, it makes it so that music doesn't have to make things more dramatic than they already are. Uh, so speaking of it, we're talking about Five Days of Memorial on Apple TV Plus. Um, how did the job come about for you? Um, I was finishing up a show with Carlton Cuse called Lock and Key. And, um, and they were looking for a composer at the last minute. And I was able to finalize uh, season three of Lock and Key and then jump right over to this one. And because it was so late in the game, um, unfortunately they couldn't move the deadline back. So I just had a couple months to, to knock this out, um, all eight episodes. Um, and it was, it was great to work with Carlton again and, um, Rauf Glasgow, the post producer was also on it. We worked really closely together. Um, and it was just, it was a good opportunity to kind of, expand my palette while working with the same people so it was kind of like a safe space um but also you know the music for five days is so different than lock and key so it was a it was a nice change of pace but it was also great to work with the same people again so when you approach uh getting ready to compose what's that process like for you um i like to i like to figure out the structure of the score first, which is not the most interesting thing <laughs> for most people. But to me, how, how the drama is built over the full season, over each episode, um, I think is very important, especially for composing, because you have to decide really early on what musical themes are gonna be important 
And a lot of times you'll end up writing too many themes for the first episode and then they never come back again. And so they're not really, they're not really thematic recurring ideas. So um, with five days, you know, there's, it's a pretty much an ensemble cast, but there's certain characters that get more focused later on. And so um, it, it became apparent like Dr. Anna Poe needed her own theme, a recurring idea for her. Um, the, like the storm for instance, actually is really only in the first episode. Um, and so that's, it's kind of like an episodic theme for the storm, but um, it doesn't really go beyond that. So there's, there's, um, there's differences that, that come about. And, um, and it, what's really tricky is when someone becomes very important later on that isn't important at the very beginning, because then you're you're kind of back you're backpedaling to like figure out a theme for this person or this idea. So um, I like to get that all squared away. Think of the full series in mind right from the beginning, so I'll know what's important later on. When you're creating scores, how personal do you get with? Your, your composing of the work. Obviously you're getting, you're getting acquainted to these characters and these journeys, but how does that look like for you personally when you're, when you're approaching the entire project? Um, one thing I usually try to do is actually stay away from the source material because it's, it'll be different than whatever the show ends up being. Um, and so in terms of how close I get to the material, it's usually based on, you know, the final cut or at least the rough cut of, of the show itself. And that's, that's how I know, you know, the tone of what it's actually going to be, who the characters actually are it, as they are represented on screen. Um, and, you know, and with a difficult show like this, like you, you do have to kind of maintain your, emotional distance otherwise it's just so it's such a heavy show um the events that happen are so devastating that i mean you kind of you do kind of get numb to it by the end of it because you watch it over and over and over again and um for me i really made sure to hold on to the feelings i had the first time i watched it because and that's what i try to duplicate in the music um is how I felt the first time because the last time I'm so emotionally numb that you know I'm not feeling anything anymore um so uh so yeah I really try to hold on to that first feeling what is something that maybe the general audience might not know about the score process that might maybe surprise them or it might be like oh that's that's cool um interesting um uh let's see it might be surprising i mean i mean one thing about the show was like you know the heavy lifting really comes from the actor's performance um and so even though like i said in the last question like i'm trying to hold on to my first reaction how i view things i'm i'm not trying to make this, the music sound as sad as I feel. I just want the music to be a safe place for me to feel sad, if that makes sense. So just because I'm crying, I don't necessarily want the music to be crying. I want the music to allow the audience to be able to cry. And usually what happens if it is a sad moment and the music pushes it too far, it will snap the audience out of it. Um, and you'll be like, oh, I understand that this is supposed to be sad, but it's not gonna make you sad, if that makes sense. So because the performances were so tremendous, like, again, I just had to, I just had to be a safe uh, place for the score to be like, it's okay to cry. Like it's, um, you know, we're not gonna make you cry, but if you need to cry, it, it'll be okay. I, there's several times I cried like a baby. So, I mean, it, it <laughs> um, another thing that's fascinating to me that the, the title song of the series is, is very 
hunting. Even though there was times when I watched it, I kind of wanted to fast forward to it. I found myself emotionally gripped to it. What's it kind of like working with that while moving into the score of the of the episode? Is that hard mm-hmm. transition or something that you have to relate to or adapt to? Um, that's interesting. So the the title track was was chosen before I was even brought on. So I wasn't part of that process at all. But I thought it fit so well um, as like an overall theme for the show. Um, and I, I think it actually kind of worked out well because usually I'll have to do the main titles and I'll try to incorporate that theme into the rest of the score, but I felt like this one worked so well as kind of its own thing. Um, and I, I didn't really, I never, you know, did any musical allusions to it or anything like that, but I, I just felt like it fit so well. And it was, with how much music I had to write in such a short amount of time, I was very relieved to not have to tackle the main titles as well. <laughs> Uh, my final question to you is, is there any upcoming projects that you can talk to us about that aren't top secrets, I guess, obviously. I know there's certain things you probably won't be able to tell us about, but if you can, you can. I get it, you can't, so. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you about <laughs> the next thing coming up, but I'm very, I'm very excited about it. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh,